Red Tribe, you're up. Okay, Justin, go ahead. Hey, if you guys have a question, uh, raise your hand up in the chat room and uh, you'll take them in order. Hey, Jack, um, it's Kirsty here. I just actually, I wanted to ask this really open-ended question to you. Um, imagine somebody is living by themselves and they live in the city and they want to get started on some things that are probably some immediate things that they should begin to do right away. I know that you're moving your family out to uh, the country and that's something that you've been thinking about doing for a long time. Um, how, how, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who does live in the city and who, you know, also does want to do something like that and to get land and, and to uh, make a lifestyle change such as that? Jack, about the only thing you can do right now is when one of those little advertisements pops up, usually on the lower left corner there will be a little mute button, picture of a speaker, you can just mute it. Um, unfortunately, it's pretty much spam and you're going to have to kind of deal with it as, it as it comes. All right, I'm back now. I'm sorry, Christy, could you repeat that question? I couldn't hear you. I had some kind of weird freaking country music playing and blaring from these these banners. Uh, so I bounced out and bounced back in. Go ahead with your question. Okay, Jack, no worries. I deal with that all the time. Um, what I wanted to say was, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who lived in the city, they live on their own, they want to get started on preparing? So what are, the, let's say, the immediate things that you should tell that person? This is what you should start doing right away. And as well, I know that you're moving your family out to the country, and I know that you've been looking into doing this for some time, and you're actually beginning to do it, like, right now. So what kind of advice would you give to somebody who is living in the city right now? What should they, how can they, you know, do that, especially if they just live by themselves? All right, well, um, I'll tell you what, great question. Let's take the first one. You're single, you're alone, you're living in the city. How do you prepare? Here's the good news. You have one person to prepare for. You have one decision maker, so everything is easier. Definitely make sure that you're putting some of your money into commodities, precious metals. Again, I recommend at least 5 to 10% of your wealth. Make sure that you're not going on autopilot with your investments, with your 401K, with, with your, your, your investments. One big thing, don't be afraid to hold some cash, folks. I mean, that's that's a huge thing that I think people are afraid of is to hold some cash. Right now, I'd rather hold cash than most stocks, though I think we might see what I've been calling a false recovery in the market. So economically, stay in touch with your money. I think that's the biggest point. It's not what you buy, what you sell. It's paying attention and not going on autopilot. For your disaster and emergency preparedness, you do the same things that I talk about all the time. Make sure that you have some food stored up. Eat where you store, store where you eat. Uh, make sure that, I mean, if you're one person alone, it's probably going to be pretty easy to put away three months. Understand that the value of food storage is that even if nothing really goes wrong, but you lose your job, you're going to eat for the next three months. Saving some cash, you're going to pay the bills for the next three months. Focus on the basics. Make sure that you have an evacuation plan. If you're alone, it probably means that you live alone, but you're not alone as far as family and connections and friends. So make sure you have a good documentation package so you can reach people. People that are alone are the ones that are the most worried about by people that are together because if for a lot of people that are alone living in a city, the rest of the family somewhere else on the other side of the country. They're going to want to know you're okay. Being able to make sure you can reach at least one of them during an emergency is very, very important. Um, 
For more on basic preparedness, I'm going to defer to my own show so we can answer enough questions tonight. So check out the Survival Podcast. Go there, use the search box. You'll find anything you want in preparedness. Uh, there's an hour show a day, five days a week you can listen to. On making the move to the country, I want to be very clear on something. The reason I'm moving to the country now isn't because I've all of a sudden decided I better do it now because all hell's going to break loose. It's because I'm allowed to now because I have this, 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 this uh, thing called a wife. And I love her very much, and I've wanted to live there for a very long time, and she's finally completely on board with going. So this would have been three years ago or longer had I had my way. So make sure you understand that I'm not getting out of Dodge because I think Dodge is about to burn. I do think that right now is a very unique opportunity. What we've seen, I was talking about this earlier, the market has not crumbled with... um, with land prices or real estate prices or anything else like that. But what has happened to a very large degree is that a lot of the prices in the country and these rural markets have stabilized. They've stopped going up. They've stopped, you know, going further and further up in price like they were. Uh, They've come down maybe a little bit. And we're at a point now where what I'm starting to see is a trend for the future. And I'm talking long-term future here, decade or two. People are are, are realizing the shortages of resources that we're dealing with. Peak oil is real. Whether you know, I I know some people believe that it's being used to manipulate or control, and it is by the extremists. But it's a finite resource, and we have a billion people in India and a billion point six people in China that all want to live our lifestyle. And even with you know production going up as much as it can, and even if they find more oil, you put enough straws into the system and suck it out. We're going to have to deal with less. That means higher prices even if it's available. So what do people do? They look at moving into cities, walk everywhere. I can take public transportation and things like that. Or they move further out and just say, the hell with it, I'm opting out. And and, and people are really bifurcating into one or two caps. And what we're actually seeing is a lot of these suburban areas that have been really desolated in places like Indianapolis and Detroit and and more cities I'm seeing, people are actually buying these houses for five to ten thousand dollars and they're bulldozing them and they're finding the land is worth more as an agricultural piece of land. And they're putting in these little urban farms. So I think the opportunity to move to the might be better now than it's ever gonna be. The more people that want let's say that only five percent of the people that vacate the suburbs head to rural land. And the other 95% that vacate go to the cities. And they'll still be suburbs. Don't get me wrong. They'll still be places where they're solid. Those are going to be the resource-rich areas that are re- rich in water and rich in infrastructure. But if only 5% of, of the suburbs moves out to rural land and starts trying to compete for the rural land that is available, what happens to the price of that land? So I think now is the time to look at making the move. The big thing to do is to pick a place that you want to live a good piece of land that you can turn into something special and go for it. Make the opportunity work for you. It's out there. It's available. You will do better putting your money in land than than letting it sit in the bank. I'll guarantee you that uh, right now. There is always a potential for booms and busts in any commodity. But the law, just like gold, we could see gold pop. We could see gold, you know, if we get a false recovery that I'm forecasting in 2011, 2012, and uh, we have a momentary period where it looks like things are rebounding and it looks like there's a lot of good places to stick your money, even for short-term gains. What are all these rich guys that bought, you know, half a billion dollars worth of gold going to do? They're going to take those profits and then they're going to move them over into another commodity and they're going to play another run. And then they're going to take their profits profits there and they're going to they're going to come on back to another place. So you can see any commodity kind of do that up and down uh, uh, bounce. But I'm going to tell you right now that long term, your good plays are going to be things you got to eat, dirt. They ain't making any more dirt, folks. So land, housing, food, water, and every other commodity out there. So have the confidence to make that move. Start shopping now. Remember that shopping is free. Define what you really want for yourself in a piece of land. If you're a couple, if you're married then what I need you to make sure you're doing is you build a common vision with your wife or your husband. If you do that, you'll find that they're very uh, much on board with maybe you think that they want to stay put. you got to find what's in it for them, too, and make sure that they see it. So I know that's kind of an open-ended answer, but, again, I want to take as many questions as I can tonight. 
Um, and that's the best I can do kind of as a quick answer for you. I'm not sure if that's me or not, but uh, my question, so I have invested quite a bit into my house trying to get ready to homestead, and in the process I've discovered there's some flaws and some expenses coming up that are concerning me, and I think we're probably at the top of the real estate market for the foreseeable future. I don't know that it's going to go down, but in my area, I don't think it's going to go up either. So I have about $20,000 in debt, and I can get that paid off by selling my house. Do you think it makes sense to sell the house now, pay off the debt, start saving money with the lower expenses that I have, and maybe buy into land some point in the future, or hang on to the house because I have it? Well, first thing I'm going to ask you is, if you did sell your house, where would you live? Uh, I would have to find some place to rent. When you think about leaving that house, what is, what is your attachment to it, you know, spiritually, emotionally? Do you love the place, or is it just you settled for it and you kind of wished you didn't settle for it, you'd like to go somewhere else? I mean, long term, is this a place that you can see yourself dying in? And I mean that in a positive way, that you could live to be an old man there, or do you really want something else? So it had a lot going on. I've put money in the last three years and probably $50,000 have gone into this house with the idea of homesteading it. That's the more I see what's going on. I'm three or four, it's kind of a, an area that's turning. So three or four blocks away, there's some real sketchy elements that sort of turn me a thing bad. And like I said, there's some structural issues. I probably got another $10,000 to put into it to get it the way that I want. And I won't be able to pay off my debt if I do that. So no, I don't completely love it. It's, it's very much what I wanted and still want. But financially and long term, I don't know that this is the house I plan to die in. Then I would probably look at selling it because you, you the, the, we are going to see real estate rebound at some point, and you want to be able to make the play for what is best for you when that comes up. So what what I would suggest you do is put it up for sale. Make sure you get a good appraisal on you. You price it at a fair price. And but the minute that you get it sold, I mean, just start socking money away with that dream piece of land. That's what I would do because, we, you know, if you had told me I want to be here for the rest of my life, I'd say make the improvements, make the investments, stick it out. If you don't want to be strong, walking away from it's going to get harder and harder. So sometimes it's not a cut and dry financial question. A lot of times it has a lot to do with our with our lifestyles. And for the person there. I heard the person asking the question fading away. Let me know if I faded away too or am I clear? And we'll go ahead and take this question.